How old is this newspaper? Well, it's old enough to have an actual article about old-timey piracy. This is the Union from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is from Tuesday morning, June 20th, 1820. Right there. Article about piracy. It's about five paragraphs long. Okay, so this is from Boston. From the Boston Patriot, June 14th. We have authority to state that three pirates who are to be executed on the morrow will be taken from the gaol precisely at a quarter past 10 a.m. They will proceed through State India Customs House and Milk Streets to the Main Street, and thence to the place of execution, which will be near to where Powers suffered on the neck. And we understand that their sentence will be complete as near noon. Let me flip this over here. As circumstance will permit. Their names are William Holmes, Edward Rose Wayne, and Thomas Warrington, otherwise called Warren Fawcett. That's a cool pirate name. Holmes is said to be a Scotchman, Rose Wayne, an Englishman, and Warren, a native of Connecticut. They originally composed part of the crews of two privateers sailing under the Buenos Aires flag. On the 28th of May, 1818, these privateers, be, being in company, fell in with and captured a vessel with valuable cargo from Havana bound to Europe. The national character of the vessel was not satisfactory ascertained at the trial. The prisoners, together with two or three other seamen and a prize captain and mate, were sent on board the captured vessel as a prize crew, with orders to carry her into Buenos Aires. Okay. It appears the evidence it appears by the evidence of Thomas Harrison, who was on board the schooner at the time that on the fourth of july eighteen eighteen check this out the crew had had some liquor and became rather intoxicated about ten o'clock in the evening. A violent quarrel took place between Holmes and a prize mate. The quarrel, however, subsided subsided. About two hours after, the witness heard Rose Wayne propose to throw the master and mate overboard, to which Holmes acceded. Holmes went below, and in a few minutes brought up a large file, sharp at the point. He and Warrington went after, where they found the mate asleep on the quarter deck. They took him, one by the head and the other by the feet, and threw him into the sea. The cries which the mate uttered upon reaching the water brought up the master from the cabin, who immediately gave order to back the topsail. The witness sprung to execute the order, and the master jumped on the hencoop to see who was in the water, when Holmes and Warrington seized him by the heels and pitched him over the rail of the vessel. They threw him overboard. He, however, caught by a rope and hung by it, when Holmes leaned over and stabbed him several times with a file, this is insane, finding they could not make him lose his hold, the rope was cut, and he dropped into the water. Nothing more was heard or seen of the mate or master, and no vessel was in sight at the time. That's insane. This is amazing. Let me reposition this. Rose Wayne took the command of the vessel and changed her course, intending to enter the Delaware. They, however, arrived at... I can't pronounce that that city or, or location, on the 30th of August. Finding where they were, the crew deserted the vessel and disappeared. They were all apprehended in the course of the next day, when the witness made a statement of the whole transaction. Wow. The jury, after an absence of about two hours and a half, returned with a verdict of guilty, which each of the prisoners, and they are to expiate their crime tomorrow by an ignominious death ignominious ignominious death wow wow so thanks for bearing with me for that an article about piracy that sounds like something out of a hollywood movie i can just see that scene happening in my head that's amazing so this is a early american life from the union Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Tuesday morning, June 20th, 1820. Thanks for checking in.